Hello everybody, Jim here again with part two of what used to be a single video. Uh, the first one I covered all the ground vehicles of 3.0 and this one I'm coming, covering all the strictly space vehicles of 3.0 and this is one that almost didn't make it in because it's been out in the public eye for so long, almost a year now or more than a year, that uh, I didn't think of it as a new ship in 3.0. It's the Constellation Aquila and I am sitting inside the Parasite Fighter, the Merlin that's sticking out the back. Let's hop up here. This is a little bay where you get your little parasite fighter craft. So if uh, you're ever attacked, you can come back here yourself or I'm stuck. Let me out. You can come back here yourself or send somebody else back here to hop into that craft and fly away to protect the constellation. Although you won't see me doing that because I'm pretty sure once you get into that fighter craft, if there's any real danger and the ship has to flee, you're just done. <laughs> there's no coming back. So my suggestion to you is, if you're asked to get into one of those, is tell the captain, uh, no, no, no thanks, or, or at the very least, once you get out there, don't shoot at the pirates. Maybe they'll take mercy on you. <laughs> I'm, I'm not getting in that thing. You can't quantum away. You can't, you can't catch up once the, this ship quantums. You're just toast. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's what NPCs are for. Here is uh, like a little engineering room. It's got all kinds of neat stuff here. You'll find that stuff scattered throughout the ship. Uh, that says high voltage, but over here I believe it says gravity generator. This is the cargo area, or if you're me, where you're going to put all the pool water, make sure it's properly chlorinated. You don't want to get algae in there. Yes, it'll grow even inside a spaceship as long as there's light. Here are the missile racks. These are a lot of missiles. You'll see there's another set over on the other side. This stuff is all pretty much standard to the various constellations, so don't think this is special to the Aquila. This is a really cool airlock, and I want to show you something. Look outside. Outside you find hell. <laughs> no, outside you find space, and I'm a dying star. I happened to line this up with the, the dying star, and I noticed before I was making the video, watch what happens when I step in here. Just a little bit. Boop. Yeah, the star goes away, and look at that. I think that is a really great example of how Star Citizen keeps the, uh, the requirements down on your computer while still giving a beautiful game. That is essentially like a bunch of fiery question marks. They're not really animated, they're just moving a little bit, but you can see they're, they're stationary pictures that are just sort of swirling through space. Looks cheesy as all get out here, but when I step back, the overall effect is glorious. So to take something so simple and turn it into something so amazing, good job CIG. And that's what they're doing with everything in this game, and that's why you can run it on a computer that doesn't cost more than like $150, believe it or not, uh, if you're really careful and you buy used parts. But uh, this here opens the cargo bay doors, and if you're me, lets out the pool water when you're done with it. So yeah, it's, this opens up here. That's where you park your Ursa rover that comes with this craft. Let's close that up again. We don't want to get sucked out into space on accident. Moving on, here is the living quarters area. You've got these little escape pod beds. Everybody likes escape pod beds. You know, you want to make sure you can get out of there while you're sleeping. Personally, I'd prefer an escape pod toilet since I spend more time in there than sleeping. And, you know... I can sleep on a toilet. I don't really do the other thing in bed. I'm just saying. But uh, not terribly comfortable. It looks really horrible if you ask me. There's like zero lumbo, lumbar support. That's like sleeping on a really soft floor. Um, no, that would wreck my hips. I wouldn't be able to walk in the morning. Over here we've got, uh, we've got a weapons rack. We've got some lockers that open. That's pretty nifty. On this side, we have like a little eating area. That's very cool. And check it out. The floor, labeled table. <laughs> That's really cool. I wish we could do that in my house. My kids would love that you could just make the table go away and then have more play space. You know, how long do you think it would take my kids to figure out that you could stand on the table and use it like an elevator? Whee! About, about two minutes. And then they'd get their feet crushed by that table thing and they'd cry and I'd have to take them to the hospital and it'd be really expensive and babies would be crippled. Anyway, <laughs> this is the airlock. Uh, it has the same foot crippling mechanic <laughs> that the table does, but it is pretty cool because once you go down there, and by the way, you'd better not be more than six feet tall or you're going to get your head taken off. Uh, you've got a little elevator that lowers into an airlock, the air cycles out, and then it brings you back in or out depending on which way you want to go. Step off quick, folks. Squeak! Okay. Over here, we have some storage that I don't think you can get into. No. And here is what, personally, I would make the escape pod. I realize you don't have a toilet for every person on this ship, but, I mean, a small ship, you could do this, you know? Anyway, here is the toilet that, oh, um, doesn't have a toilet. It's like a doghouse, like a doggy door. 
why is there no toilet? Maybe it's just got a really good drain for the shower. <laughs> sort of close the door and, and call it a day. I don't know. Uh, if anybody knows what happened to the toilet on this ship, there should really be a pooper because that will be a game mechanic. Sorry, folks who you know feel that that's TMI. Uh, up here, you've got this little area with some more components for you to fix later on in the game once that's implemented, like the shield generator and the avionics over here. This is the turret system. I will not be getting into the bottom turret because it's currently broken. Just know that it's got a decent view and you uh, you don't... I'm sorry, can't think. Brain fart. Uh, you, you can't look out and see anything right now. It's just guns and you can't really see anything because it's kind of broken at the moment. This one, though, is unique to the Constellation Aquila. The first really unique feature we've seen. This is, I think it's like a, a, a science turret, I think is what they call it. So I guess it shoots science. I don't know. I don't know what it does. What you can do is like you can mess with the uh, the the energy consumption where you want that to go. Uh, you can. Oh no! I think I'm caught in an F mode. Hmm. That's weird. Oh, there we go. Um, you can spin around and look at things, and I guess scan things. I don't really know how that works. I wish the gun turrets looked this good, because this is a really cool looking turret. But yeah, it it's a science turret. It shoots science. You can quote me on that. Let's get back down here. We'll take a look at the cockpit, which is my personal favorite feature of the Constellation Aquila. All of the other constellations, I think the cockpit is gorgeous. This one really brings it home for me. I love this. Check it out. It's a big round cockpit. The other ones are kind of pointy. This just looks cool. And it takes me back to, you know, probably the original Star Trek and the saucer section on the Enterprise. This, this reminds me of that. And I really, really like it. Something else I discovered. If you look here you will see you can actually like use the functions on the control pad here while standing. I don't know if that's an intended feature, but I really like it because you know if you run into the ship and you need to like open the doors for somebody, you don't have to take the time to sit down. I hope this is a thing that they keep doing. That's really nice. Uh, instead, what you do if you want to get into the chair is you can't just you can't just come up here and say I'd like to sit in this chair, please, like a normal person. No, this has got to be an expensive chair. So you click on the back and it spins around for you. What a useless, glorious feature. Um, so we'll sit down here and let the chair spin us back around. Oh, that's so much easier than just sitting down. And we're in the seat. We can look outside a little bit before we get moving, and you will see. Oop, oop, I'm turning. You will see that this saucer section, as I call it. This, uh, this little rounded guy here looks really cool. They've been working on the glass shaders in all of the, all of the ships, and it's looking really, really good. Uh, even my Starfarer, Gemini, looks much, much better than it did. But you can't really see the turrets out here. Those, you can see that line sort of in the bottom center of the screen. That opens up uh, on both sides, sort of like a, I don't know, like a, like a giant cargo bay door, I guess. It opens up and the turrets pop out. Um, the back of the ship... Looks pretty much the same as the other constellations. We can come down here, and here's the rest of the Merlin, the rest of the Death Trap attached to the bottom of the ship. Uh, have fun, NPCs. I'm not getting in that thing. And, yeah, that's pretty much the exterior. There's nothing really special about this particular ship, you know, looks-wise from the outside, except the front. And the front is a really nice addition. Uh, Speed-wise, it is faster than most ships its size. It's it's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's reasonably quick on the turn. Uh, the weapons are pretty good. It's overall a pretty good multi-cruise ship. I think that the Constellations need to be a little sturdier. I think they're a little on the explodey side right now. And maybe that'll change. Maybe it won't. But uh, that's that's why I'm not such a big fan of the ship personally. But, I mean, that's not a reason to not like it. That's just a reason to be more careful. Because there's a lot to recommend this ship. But if you want to get into combat... This is, this is not the ship I would take. For the, the limited maneuverability and the limited speed, uh, the, limited, uh, the limited retro thrust for stopping, I think that you're probably, you're probably going to be in a lot of trouble if you find somebody who's a decent pilot and a pretty quick ship. I've taken the uh, Andromeda down in my Mustang Delta, and that's one of the crappier fighters in the game. It just happens to be pretty quick. So that's it for the Constellation Andromeda. Overall, it's a really cool ship. If you're looking to get in some multi-crew, I think it's a little pricey on the website. Personally, I would skip this one and just go straight for the Carrick if I was going to spend that much money. But, you know, that's up to you. That's your own personal choice. Uh, moving on, we're going to hit up the Prospector. We're going to hit up the new, uh, 
Oh, what you call that little ship? I love that ship. The Aurora Rework. That's what it is. Aurora Rework. Man, that's fun to say. <laughs> the Aurora Rework. And uh, then on to the, uh, the Cutlass Black. It's going to be awesome. I love that new rework on the Cutlass Black. All right. Let's go see. Probably, I think I'm doing the Aurora next. And I'm sure you'll recognize this fellow here as an Aurora. This is the Aurora LX. It's gotten a brand spanking new redesign. And I think they just did it so they could get the new cleaner damage states and, and get the number of polys down on the thing so it doesn't take up so much of your system resources. And every time they do that to a ship, essentially, they lessen the amount of detail. But then I look at it, and it seems more detailed. I don't know how they do it, and frankly, I don't care. It's magic. That's, that's what it is. It is sufficiently advanced technology. But you can see it got some new little footsies here. It got uh, some new landing gear. These, if I recall, actually do absorb shock when you land. Makes it a little bit easier to land. And I love the looks of these. They're so industrial and old school robotic. They look great. It's none of those little chicken feet like some of the racers have. It's not uh, not the monsters like you'll find on the bottom of the Starfarer. This is just old school robot foot landing gear, and I think it's awesome. Real quick, let's take a look inside here. My favorite door in the game. <laughs> Um, the bed is still here. Let's see if we can crawl into it. I haven't done this since they redid it. Can we get in? Yeah, we can get in. Oh, it looks even less comfortable. They better still have hyper pillow technology. I think they got rid of the hyper pillow. Oh, those dirty, dirty dogs. And you know what else it doesn't have? There used to be a window right above your head so you could lay in bed and stare into the deep, dark abyss of space and have an existential crisis. But now, apparently, they realize people sleep better in these, like, Japanese condos. Uh, oh, still wipe your mouth when you get up. That's nice. Let's hop out here. Apparently, something about the uh, bed in the Aurora makes your mouth taste like crap. There we go. And that is the interior of the ship. We will also get this one out into space to let you see how that works. Let's go do that right now. Whee! Welcome to Robert Space Industries. Enjoy the ride. System check. <laughs> and here we are in the new Aurora, in the inside in the cockpit. And it looks pretty much like I remember it with some, some glaring obvious differences. Overall, I think it looks much, much better. And, you know, the important thing is... I loved the look of the Aurora before, and they kept it, and I honestly, I think, I, once again, they improved on it. This isn't as big of an improvement as the new uh, uh, Cutlass, but still, I think this is unquestionably better. If we have a look at the outside here again, basically, it's like the Aurora went on a little bit of a diet, and I'm okay with that. Uh, we've got the same basic shape, we've got the same glorious cockpit, we've got the heat sinks on the back. <laughs> Uh, overall, it is basically the same shape, basically the same size, and it still looks fantastic. Ooh, gorgeous. Anyway, let's get on to the next ship. Here we have the Misk Prospector back in the Selfland hangar. I'm going to real quick walk around this thing and give you guys an idea of what all these things are. These guys right here, um, those are just spotlights, which... Uh, are going to be nice when it's very, very dark in space. Somewhere under here, let's see if I got, yeah, that thing, ooh, ah, I'm falling. That thing right there, I believe, is in a, oh, I'm crawling. <laughs> Back up. That thing there, I believe, is a super duper sensor package that lets you detect all of the minerals that you'll be mining. Let me, let me crawl back out here. There we go. That you'll be mining with this here laser. The laser is interesting because I'm pretty sure that these three red dots around the triangle here, these are the actual mining lasers. The big central thing is actually more like a vacuum. There's a bit of a tractor beam projector thingy that pulls everything you mine out and sucks it through this hose. It goes into the hose. Somewhere inside of the prospector, it goes through a refining process inside the ship. So inside the ship, it, it sorts out all the guck from the gold and all of the gold gets pumped into these bags here, which actually can be ejected and then replaced or automatically. So a new one will fall down and fill the place. I don't know how the process will work. I'm looking forward to the animation, but you can actually drop these off and put new ones in without ever getting out of the ship. So when all the good stuff goes into here, 
there's all the bad stuff left. So it travels somewhere through the digestive system of the ship and comes out that vent up there. It poops it right out the back. All of your junk, all of your ejecta is going to go flying out the bottom here. And then you will be left with nothing but the good stuff. Now, my personal favorite YouTuber, Buzzkiller09, doing Star Citizen stuff, showed me that there's a hatch here. Check this out. I did not know this was here. But look at that. Look how happy it is to see us. <laughs> is, that a, is that a control panel in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? Yeah. Oh. He is real happy to see us. I have no idea what this thing is. I've been looking at it for probably about 20 minutes now, trying to figure it out. Ah, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Trying to figure it out. There's no real indication. The only thing I can think is that there's supposed to be a control panel here, and they just haven't put it in yet. Who knows? No one knows. That's who. All right. Let's go take a quick look inside. Now, we may discover that the it is damaged and there are flames. We may also find that there is a large... Uh, cargo box in there, but we'll climb up the ladder here. I don't know why every time I try to go into this thing, it's been damaged in the hangar. Looks like we got away scot-free this time. All right, let's take a look around in here. I'll turn the lights off and get the neons going. This is your super comfy bed. I bet you're dying to sleep on that. Oh, yeah. Hey, you remember the nurse's office from uh, elementary and high school? That's That's what they had in there. I think I was only in there once because I had a migraine. And they're like, go to the office. Like, wait, I get to nap during school? <laughs> okay. Uh, that's your bed. You can lay down here. Oh, I just clicked log out on accident. I don't, how do I lay down? Hmm, I don't know. I think it already thinks I'm in bed. Yeah, this is sort of a vestigial log out button. You're supposed to be able to log out inside the ship so that when you come back to the game, you will log back in inside your ship. But that's not working yet. But anyway, this is your bed. Uh, this back here is access to components. That's a cooler. Uh, more components over here. You've got your gravity generator and your jump drive. Down here, you've got some kind of control panel. Can't do anything with that. Life support's down there. Radar. Wow, this is really well set up. I love this little thing. Uh, over here, it looks like you, you get your snacks. you got some blankies and towels. And here comes my favorite part, the pooper. You guys know how I like a pooper. Whoa, that is super green. Um, and in here you have... Oh, look at them blink. Look at them blink. Can I turn you on? Nope, I'm turning on the door. I actually turned this on the other day, but... Ah, oh, dang it. Water came out. It was the coolest thing. Uh, but now all I can do is open the door. So you've got the, the pooper-shower combo that I have always desperately wanted in my own home, but my wife won't let me have. She says they have those things in campers. If you want them, go live in one of those. But yeah, you got your, your standard MISC bathroom. Up here, you have probably the best view of any cockpit in the game. But I'm going to show you that in space here in a minute. So I'm not going to hop into the seat just yet. But yeah, there's your cockpit. And that is the inside of the MISC prospector and all of the processes and how they work. Let's get this thing on to, out into space so I can show you a little bit more. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you see me in there? Just chilling. I'm just chilling in my cockpit. Uh, here we are in the MISC Prospector. I think you will find that Musashi Industrial and Starflight Concern has the best and the worst cockpits in the game bundled into a single company. Oh, but look at that. This one is glorious. And look at those new glass shaders doing the business. Looks really good. And I have looked at them on the Starfarer as well. Those are also fantastic. But look at this cockpit. Look, the bubble even extends beneath your feet. That's that's fantabulous. <laughs> this is just really, really good. And let's have a look inside. Look at that. Look at this view. Oh, it's phenomenal. And it's not even for combat. All the people complaining that their fighters, uh, their fighters' huds take up so much space. And you get this for a totally non-combat ship. In fact... It is possibly the worst combat ship in the game outside of, like, the Argo. You get these two terrible little guns. I mean, they're just, they're just the worst loadout in the game. Um, I, I think the X1 might have a worse loadout, but we have to let that one get finished first. Uh, the acceleration is not great, uh, especially for the size of the engines in the ship. 
If we turn around here, look how long it takes you to get turned around. Just forever. Uh, this is not a combat ship. But that's okay. Because what it is, as far as I'm concerned, is the best solo concept in the game. This thing is fantastic. I love the concept of this ship because so far it's the only industrial ship that lets you do everything completely by your lonesome. Uh, even like the Terrapin is a solo exploration ship, but I still don't feel like that concept is, is pure exploration. Even the Lore, it wasn't designed as an exploration ship. This is 100% mining, designed from the ground up to be the best personal mining ship you can get and it does it exceptionally well. Let's have a look over here, because I want to get a look at the, uh, what you call them? Landing gear, that's what they're called. Here they go, check that out. And you got the uh, the VTOL thrusters there, that looks really good. This is a super cool concept, it's a super cool design. I love the uh, the freelancer feel with all of the industrial stuff on it. This looks really good, the concept is great. I think it will do its job better than almost any other ship in the game. And you've got this ridiculously good cockpit on something that basically has no use for it. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you can look out and you can see the asteroid, but you can't see the minerals inside of it through the glass. <laughs> you need your scanners to find that. You don't mine the, you know, the, the outer crust of a planet. You want to mine down into it. So you've got this massive, massive open cockpit, and all you get it's a really good view in a ship that doesn't need it. <laughs> How gloriously stupid is that? Oh, it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. But this has been the Misk Prospector. I cannot heap enough praise on this ship. I wish every ship were as well designed as this because I love it. All right, let's see what we got next. And here is the new Cutlass Black. Boom! <laughs> Man, every time I call that thing up, it seems huge. Um, we're not really going to take a look around inside, because every time I spawn this for some reason in the latest patch... Here, I'll, I'll, just, get, I'll just let you see. It spawns damaged. So the downside is we can't really look around in here. The upside is we get to look at cool flames. How cool is that? Pretty cool. That's how cool. Um, but if we come outside, there's one thing in particular I want to show you. This has gotten much, much bigger. How much bigger, you ask? I can show you exactly how much bigger. Uh, it's basically still got the same size guns. You can get three or four size three guns on it. I think the guns on the turret are still size three. But if you look here at the very tip of this nose, where I'm standing right now, right here. Let's, let's have a look. There we go. Right here. I'm going to show you a picture that I took of somebody else standing right here to somebody else's actually who were also me. Uh, they stood right here under this nose and I took a picture at the back of the air view hangar from as far away as the camera could go so the cameras were equally distant and then I sized the pictures so that the two men standing there were approximately the same size except I think the one under the cutlass, the new cutlass black might be a little bit smaller so the cutlass itself might actually be bigger in relation to the other. Uh, if you look here, you will see as this slowly transitions, the new cutlass appearing over top of the old. Look at that. That That is very different. <laughs> that thing is much bigger. And we'll just let it go for a minute while it switches back and forth between a couple of others. Uh, we'll get a side view in here as well. But when this is done, we'll get back out into space and I will tell you a little bit about what I think of the new Cutlass Black. Okay, here we are in a Drake Cutlass Black, out in space. As you can see, it's still pretty quick. Let's get up to regular SCM speed. Uh, 220, that's not too shabby, I think. That's still like Hornet speeds. Of course, all of this is subject to change, so don't think that that's going to stay that way for long. I think it, you know, the speed on these things has changed like... Impact warning. Woo! <laughs> it's changed like three times since it came out. So, yeah, it, 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 it'll change again. But uh, you can see there's a lot less visual uh, real estate here. Uh, you can't see everything that you need to see. You've got a much bigger HUD and I think that is to reflect the sort of cargo and boarding and industrial ship nature of the new Cutlass Black. But I'm okay with that. Let's take a quick look at everything outside. I think 
that this is the far superior Cutlass Black. But then again, my favorite ship drives like a dump truck on ice. <laughs> what do I know? But look at that. You got the little claw feeties, just like on the uh, the Buccaneer. You've got a much bigger ship. You've got a much meaner ship. My brother says it's much musclier. Uh, that's that's how he likes it. And it when it flies, it sort of feels like it's somewhere between the old Cutlass and the Freelancer, which makes a certain amount of sense because despite the fact that it's you know probably more massive than a Freelancer now, and the fact that it is more of a cargo slash boarding slash you know jack of all trades ship than it was. Look at those engines. <laughs> I mean, they're still huge. It should still be pretty quick uh, on, on its feet. It should still accelerate pretty well. All right, let's pop into the ship now and have a look at things inside. Oop, oh, there we go. One of my favorite things about the new cockpit is the location of the pilot seat. Watch here. Yep, it raises you straight up instead of pushing you over. And when you hop into this seat, the co-pilot seat, it actually lifts you up even higher. So like the pilot seat is like up here, the co-pilot seat is like up there. So you don't even see the pilot when you're in the co-pilot seat. An excellent design. Back here are the new living quarters. You may recall that these used to be inside of the cargo compartment and there was like a little a little toilet next to the bed. <laughs> little, little almost look like a chemical toilet. And you know, somebody would have to sit there on the toilet next to somebody else's head or feet while they slept. Uh, now we've got these nice bunks, and there is no toilet at all. There's no toilet, there's no sink. If you want to wash your hands, you have to do it someplace else. There ain't no powder room. Now over here we've got a weapons rack. Here is the new turret access. We'll hop in that turret real quick so you can get a comparison to the old one. Again, the turret is far superior. It looks much better. You can, unlike, you know, the cockpit, you can see much more than you could in the old turret. Yeah, this is, this is a much better turret, if you ask me. The old one, I'll slap a picture up here so you can see what it looked like, and you can compare this to that. There is no comparison. Let's hop out of here now. Ooh, that was fun. And we'll go take a look at the cargo compartment. The cargo compartment is where this ship really shines, because previously this was not a cargo ship. This was, you know, like a fighting cargo ship. But... They replaced the fighting nature of this ship with an all-new ship, the Buccaneer, and that has become my favorite fighter now. Uh, so this has become, I think, something that we really needed. This is sort of an all-purpose ship. It's pretty good at carrying cargo. You've got these two cargo plates, which puts it, I don't know, somewhere on par with the Freelancer, I'd have to guess. You've got these six seats in the back, which makes it a pretty good drop ship, uh, because you can sort of drop people out. Let's see if I can open this. You can open? We got a button? Here's a button. It uh, makes it a pretty good drop ship, so you can lower that gate and have all these people charge out with their weapons. That's pretty cool. It's a pretty good boarding ship. Uh, you've also got these side doors. So if you want air support, you can actually have people flying around in this ship with hand weapons, shooting from behind the cover of the ship's shields at people on the ground. How cool is that? So they can go out the back, they can go out the sides. You've got one on both sides. So, you know, you're gonna have you're gonna have drop ship, boarding ship, cargo ship. It's pretty fast, it's got a pretty good range because of the beds. It's reasonably maneuverable, it's pretty big. This is an all-around good ship now. If you are a small group of say, you know, three to eight or nine people, I think this might be the ship for you. You could do almost anything you want with this, and you could do it pretty well. It's a real jack-of-all-trades. And that's all I have for the new ships and reworks of 3.0, except the Saber Raven. <laughs> for anybody who doesn't already know what that is, it's like the existing Saber Fighter, except I think it's got fewer weapons, and it has a massive EMP generator thingy stuck up inside. Uh, that's, that's really it. Uh, thank you all who stuck around to the end of what is probably the longest video on my channel. I really admire your fortitude. And thank you to everyone else who's probably already gone. Even though you guys don't hear this, thank you anyway, and I will see you next time.